This is Bob and Lee's journey uh, on the Danube River from Milk to Krems. Uh, the night before our trip, we did all our preparation, tuning up the bikes, getting our patch kits together, tools, whatever else we needed. Uh, we also uh, pulled up a list of things to do to see if we missed anything, and then we purchased our tickets through the OBB site and purchased an Einfach Raus rod ticket, which is great. Uh, the next morning rolled around and we caught the U-Bahn over to West Bonhof. Um, pretty quick and easy to get there. We didn't want to really burn up any energy before we started our trip. And then uh, our train departed at 6.50. So things went pretty smooth, no problems there. The, the train itself was fantastic. They had a hook to hang the bike and we could ride in coach. So great start for the day. The scenes along the train ride were uh, very beautiful. Uh, the countryside, spectacular looking, and then uh, we finally arrived in Melk. We didn't actually spend any time at the monastery. We uh, got to the train station. They were doing some construction on the right side. We had to cross over a footbridge to get to our starting point. Uh, we still enjoyed a beautiful view of the monastery from down below just before we started our ride. Um, the morning was a little cool. But otherwise, it was a sunny day and we were looking forward to the ride. We accidentally made the wrong turn, but um, it doesn't matter because you get to enjoy sights like what we see right here with the cascading water. One of the things we realize that we'll have to pay attention to is uh, signs. And there's a milk monastery, the abbey. Well, you can see once Lee gets his chain fixed, it's not going to be an easy ride up. He's got a nice climb. And it uh, comes into a hairpin turn and then another climb. This is a bridge that we had to cross over the Danube and uh, then we could start our journey into Krems. So here's the first village we're coming into, Grimsing. Doesn't look like anything but a few homes. Here's Lee, the Chainmeister by the end of this trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, So we're in Augsbach and heading down. There's this beautiful stream. That's me crossing over the bridge. Nice place it looks like to stay if you just want to get away from it all. The views were spectacular on this ride with uh, castles on mountaintops on the sides of the mountains. Um, the vineyards, the villages, uh, on the meandering bike trail. It was just really breathtaking. Uh, the farmers were out working their vineyards, the groves of uh, trees that they had, and and uh, I can only imagine what it's going to be like in another month or two when everything blooms. So we're planning another couple of trips, uh, one probably a 70 miler, uh, before the high season kicks in and before uh, the heat really sets in. Now the total ride time for the trip was about two and a half hours long. What made our day uh, longer than we expected was just the sheer beauty of everything around us. We wanted to take it in, stop to enjoy uh, the views and take photos, uh, stopped along a restaurant to eat outdoors and bask in the sun. So if you're planning to go on this trip, uh, you want to 
planning or factor in some extra time just for these stops, especially if you have a beautiful day like we did with the sun shining and uh, very little wind until the afternoon. This time of the year, there wasn't anybody on the roads. Uh, we probably saw less than a dozen people during the whole 24 mile trip. Um, and that included uh, riding through the small villages like you see here. I rode from one end to the other in a matter of a minute or two uh, without any traffic at all. It was just uh, fantastic. Morgan. I've mentioned before that just about everywhere you ride there's just something spectacular that comes into view even in the, through the small tunnels and then all of a sudden you come upon this old fortress uh, that has a church built into it and then beyond that you, you meet up with the Danube again to your right side and just incredible views of the mountains around you and vineyards and it's a lot to take in. Eventually, we made it to Dernstein, and Dernstein's probably one of the most uh, beautiful villages along the Danube on that stretch of uh, the bike trail that we were on. Uh, history has it that Richard the Lionheart was held captive of above on the castle ruins at uh, just to the left. If you walk uh, from north to south through Dernstein, you'll see castle ruins up on the top, and Dernstein itself is just few of all, uh, has all kinds of hidden beauty that you probably just need to discover on your own. Once you enter from the north side, you get off your bike and you walk through it. You can walk through pretty quick and get through in a matter of probably 15 minutes. Um, but I would suggest just slowing down and enjoying it. And the other end, there's a nice restaurant. Uh, apparently a lot of bikers sit over there. There's a castle ruins behind Lee right now. Um, but anyway, the, the restaurant's cozy, probably a little bit overpriced, but it was just a nice place to take a break before we started the rest of our journey uh, into Krems, which wasn't too far down the road from there, about another 45 miles. Um, I already mentioned I'll do this trip again, and, and I'll probably do it several times before I leave here. It was just that great a trip. This is Steins. Oh no, it's Krem. So here we go. Well, I hope this gave you a little bit of insight into the journey if you plan on making it. Uh, I would highly suggest doing it. Just plan ahead, be prepared, and happy trails, and I'll be the same.